Hi, I'm Dr. Manny, President of Bay Area Gastroenterology. I'd like to discuss an extremely important topic today about Crohn's disease and colitis. One of the most serious afflictions of the colon is a condition called colitis. Colitis means an inflammation of the colon, of which there are several kinds. Some of them are short-lived and self-limiting conditions, such as an infection that occurs with the ingestion of contaminated food, or the outbreak of, a, of an infection. The more severe diseases that are associated with the colon are what we classify under the chronic colitis, such as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. This disorder is a spectrum that varies from mild to severe, which is largely predicated based upon the patient's genetic background. The common denominator is the inflammation of the colon. The colon is the large intestine, which extends from the right side of the abdomen where the appendix and the small intestine join the colon all the way to the left side and to the rectum. Any part of the colon could be involved in a colitis and sometimes it also affects a small intestine in conditions such as Crohn's disease. These symptoms tend to vary between mild abdominal pain, changes and alterations in bowel functions such as diarrhea, to profound weight loss, bleeding, and life-threatening disorders. So this is a spectrum that varies from mild to severe. There are certain types of colitis that are extremely subtle and mild and oftentimes never get picked up. It can overlap a great deal with symptoms of the irritable bowel syndrome and it's not uncommon, especially in the old days when these names and diseases were used interchangeably. We realize now that irritable bowel syndrome is not a disease but a dysfunction of the colon related to various factors. It's probably one of the most commonly seen and disabling conditions that we deal with. On the other hand, Crohn's and colitis is a true disease of the colon which is characterized by severe inflammation and again varies from mild to severe. Oftentimes, patients with mild forms of colitis are misdiagnosed as having irritable bowel syndrome. There are certain variants of colitis called microscopic colitis, which can only be picked up at the time of colonoscopy if one is diligent about doing multiple biopsies and looking at the biopsies under the microscope with an expert pathologist. It's important to make this distinction because microscopic colitis is treated very differently from irritable bowel syndrome. The most common types of colitis that one encounters as a gastroenterologist is Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, both of which I believe are the same diseases that manifest differently in different people based on their genetic makeups. The disease is usually diagnosed at the time of colonoscopy on the basis of typical findings at the time of colonoscopy as well as biopsy evidence of inflammation and ulceration. Treatment for this condition has to be instituted early on because it can have profound effects in the long run. Untreated disease can give rise to life-threatening complications and a major impact on the life of the individual. The aim of treatment is to restore a normal lifestyle without any symptoms so that the individual can go about their life as if nothing had happened. Treatment obviously depends upon a variety of factors. The main causes of inflammatory bowel disease or colitis is largely unknown. It is now believed that there is a genetic predisposition that gets influenced by lifestyle, diet, perhaps the use of antibiotics, perhaps even exposure to previous infections, and a combination of environmental and genetic factors. Once established, the disease tends to be relapsing and chronic. Treatment has to be individualized. In other words, in mild patients, one can use a very simple approach of anti-inflammatory medicines. In patients with more significant or severe disease, they need to be treated with a host of medications, some of which may require very close monitoring and the use of medications such as immunoregulatory compounds. Patients with chronic colitis such as Crohn's and ulcerative colitis have to be monitored regularly by the gastroenterologist with blood work as well as periodic follow-ups in the office. Once a course of therapy such as immunoregulatory uh, therapy is instituted, they need to be followed up 
on a very regular basis because of potential side effects of the medications. Frequent as well as surveillance colonoscopies are indicated because there's a high incidence of colon cancer in patients who have had chronic disease for many years. So in order to accurately diagnose and treat Crohn's disease and various types of colitis, it is essential to establish a firm diagnosis and to be monitored by individuals who have a great deal of experience and expertise in handling these disorders. If we can be of further help and assistance, please contact us on our website at www.gibay.com or 281-480-6264. Thank you for your time.